Anybody have anything you would like to bring forth in this moment? I'd be interested in hearing you say a little more about um, sort of what is needed to respond. So you spoke about the um, lack of moral restraint for Trump. So just what, so what be, be besides DreamWorks, so 100% on board yeah. with you and how DreamWorks can help us with that. But what does that actually look like as religious professionals to tap into that um, lack of moral restraint and creative energy instead of doing it in a nihilistic, destructive way that Trump is doing? How do we channel that to the good, knowing that, of course, anything we do creates a shadow? Exactly. Anything we do creates a shadow, and paradoxically, the better the thing is that we do, the more powerful the shadow is that is evoked. In that sense, the election itself is proof of how far we have come in fulfilling the American dream. It has called forth this reactionary response. And probably the most important piece of all of that is that that reactionary response would not be there in that strength if the vision of hope and possibility upon which this country is founded had not achieved the development that it already has. I wrote an essay for the society, UU Society for Community Ministries, pointing out that a shadow piece of American revolutionary history is that the evidence that the majority of influential founding fathers, acknowledging the sexism in that phrase right from the get-go, were masons and the number of professional portraits that they have made of themselves in their masonic aprons it alone is enough to demonstrate the proof of that the other side of that proof is looking at the back of a dollar bill where you see the back of the great seal of the united states it's a half finished pyramid and floating above is the keystone, which is a triangle with an open eye in it. This is a well-known Masonic image. And it's an archetypal symbol for the evolution of consciousness. There are rays of light emanating from the eye at the top of the pyramid. And that's about the eye, the open eye, as an archetypal metaphor of human consciousness. And that particular eye has evolved to the point where not only does it take in the light and form perfectly focused images for the mind, it has evolved to the point where it emanates that light as well, out onto everybody else. And it is, for those who have the wit to notice, incontrovertible evidence that this country was founded out of a Masonic conspiracy to have a country, a government that was devoted to the evolution of human consciousness. And we are, as near as I can make out, the only nation that was founded in that fashion. So I'll just say I totally appreciate and agree with everything you said, and I'm still not sure. I don't know if there's anything else precisely you well, say. What does that look like specifically to yeah. to respond to Trump yeah. in a in that lack of moral restraint, right. tapping into create a moral energy way? A personal favorite of mine, and it's I show my age in it, is street demonstrations with larger-than-life rod puppets. 12, 15, 20-foot-tall rod puppets. The size of the puppets is an absolutely inescapable indication that what's being described is beyond the personal. 
It's just like a dream, exaggerated size and multiple iterations, multiple numbers are very reliable markers for the encounter with archetypal energies. And that in the waking world, the creative energy that goes into making and manipulating those puppets and providing dialogue for them, shouted through bullhorns mostly, is an immensely creative street theater response. And they're puppets. <laughs> they're <laughs> They're not Molotov cocktails. They aren't sticks with nails in them. But they have the same strength. They impact on the viewers in a way which is similarly impactful. Yeah, similarly so what I, what I, impressive. Thank you. That, that's actually really helpful. What I hear you saying, and then I'll, I'll step back, is that uh, I hear you saying that, uh, like, I, I perceive Trump as very cannily manipulating image and spectacle and that we can use, that we would perhaps behoove us to use that, to become better at theatricality and spectacle mm -hmm. and image. Thank you. Yes, exactly so. And because it's about creativity, I mean, one of the problems with that example is that the Bread and Puppet Theater did that. And I think they did it very successfully. And I don't know if any of those veterans are around anymore. And I don't know if the current generation would pick up on how exciting it is. But it's already there. And before the Bread and Puppet Theater people did it, it wasn't there. And that there are similar things available to us if we let go of our habitual notions of what's appropriate for us to do. And I think sabotage at later stages of development is a perfectly reasonable thing to do. You know, the word derives from sabots, the wooden shoes that the factory workers wore in Holland. And sabotage originally meant you threw your wooden shoes into the machines and forced them to stop. I distinguish sabotage from violence against living beings. And keeping that clear and allowing us to think creatively about sabotage, I think is a responsible thing to do. I just did a personal theology piece up at the Unitarian Church in Kensington yesterday, and part of the discussion had to do with what do we as Unitarian Universalists do if there is a registry established for Muslims? And it seems to me that one of the things that we need to do is to resist that process in multiple ways. One of the things is for us all to go down and register as Muslims and just make the registry itself unusable because it doesn't separate people out the way it's supposed to. I'm not a big fan of that as a strategy because it acknowledges the right of the registry to exist to begin with there is going to be a moral imperative to protect the people who are being attacked directly, either attacked by ICE for deportation or prevented from accessing health, whatever. We need to mobilize and not just announce that we are allies, but find actual creative things to do to protect and support those folks. And that quite possibly the actual strategizing for that might be better undertaken somewhere than in large public meetings. <laughs>